God's got good things for us, got good things he wants to do and say to us. We're going to have a good summer around here. Good summer, good summer. Praise God. Go with me to Matthew chapter 10. We're going to start in verses 9 through 13. I'm going to finish this up this morning. We've been talking uh, on Sunday mornings. This is actually something I started back in April, but we've had a lot of interruptions and different guests and uh, different things going on over the last uh, couple months. And so this is, I think, part five or something like that. Uh, but we've been talking along. The, it seems like more, I know, but uh, we've been talking about the subject of uh, Pray This Way. It's been the title of the series. And uh, this is more than just going over the Lord's Prayer. Like we said before, this is a roadmap or a... Uh, 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 a uh, an instruction, rather. You can put the title up, pray this way. It's more of a, a kind of a description of uh, 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 some guidelines, so to speak, of our prayer life, not just individual praying or necessarily every time we pray, but the uh, motives in prayer, the things that we go to the Lord about. How many know that prayer is not just Christianese? It's just not something you do when you're in trouble. It's not just something you do when there's a big calamity or problem. Oh, Jesus, take the wheel. It's more than that, right? It's just simply communication with God. It's simply talking with him. And we're good at that. We know how to talk to one another. We should be good at talking to God. Amen. And so this was something that uh, in Luke chapter 11, we won't look at it. Luke's account of, this, of these passages, uh, his disciples <clears throat> asked Jesus, they said, you know, teach us to pray. A lot of things they could have asked for, uh, but they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. Now, obviously, something about Jesus' prayer life looked a little different. That culture was very religious. You know, today we live in a, in a culture that by and large does not describe it as religious. And I'll be honest with you, I don't describe my life as religious. I have a relationship. Two very different things, but uh, their culture at that time was very religious, a lot of formalities and a lot of ceremonial things that they did. And prayer was a part of their everyday life. They'd go to the temple, especially amongst the Jewish people, would go to the temple and they would pray. It was a part of their life. Uh, but, you know, not everybody's prayers were effective. I mean, no, not everybody's prayers today are effective or what people call prayer is effective. And really what Jesus here was teaching them, and of course the disciples asked, you know, teach us to pray. There's something different about the way you pray. Teach us to pray. And uh, with what Jesus said, it's, it helps us to make sure our prayers, our communication with the Father is productive, it's effective. I mean, not all communication in between people is productive. There, there's a lot of people talking, but not, not a lot of people hearing. There's a lot of people saying things, but not a lot of people actually responding. There's a lot of, a lot of talking at each other that goes on, and a lot of conflict uh, arises from that. Well, our relationship with God and our communication with God, it's not that we're looking, it's not a, an issue of conflict, but it's an, act, it's an issue of being effective in our communication, effective in our prayer with, in our, our prayer with Him, our communication with Him, and um, uh, so Jesus was giving them instructions and, and directions on how to make sure they do this right in the proper way. Like I said, it's not a formula. Every time you pray, you say these exact words. That's, that takes the heart out of it. Anytime th something is prescribed, you just do this to get this, your heart is removed. It, your, your connection is removed. We want to make sure our connection with God stays strong. Our heart stays tender and open towards him. That is the key to a successful Christian life, one that is pleasing to, to the Lord. How many know when we get to heaven, the thing that he's going to be most interested in and the thing that he will be most aware of is our love for him and our relationship that we maintain with him. Yes, there are things we've been called to do. We have an assignment, things that the Lord has graces upon our life, giftings upon our life, things that the Lord has uh, willed for us to do. But how many know that your relationship with God is of the utmost importance, right? And so anytime you just have a prescribed agenda, a prescribed routine, it's easy for us to get into just this is what I do, punch the buttons, you know, check the boxes, so to speak. And Jesus was trying to get them to get to the place where their communication was effective. And it wasn't about box checking, but it was about uh, maintaining the right priorities and things in prayer. Amen. So let's look at this in Matthew chapter 6. Quick review here, Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. In response to their request, teach us to pray. He said to them, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this, this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Who's heard that prayer before? Yeah, that's such a common thing. You know, I, I'd given the, uh, the, the example. I was the, uh, uh, 
chaplain for the football team at Santa Fe, Santa Fe when we moved back from Jacksonville uh, back in 2003 for the next eight or nine years. I was the, uh, the chaplain with the football team there at Santa Fe. And it was a great time and got to hang out with them before the game, give a devotional every single week and uh, go to the games with them. Something happened, got to go out and pray with people and pray before the game and, and you know, just be there with them. And uh, so it was, it was a good time. But every time before the game, you know, uh, they'd get together and they'd recite the Lord's Prayer in the most enthusiastic, almost psychotic manner. It was the scariest Lord's Prayer uh, that I've ever heard. You know, we're, you know, forgive us our debts as we kill these people. I mean, it was, it was so intense. And so I know people know this uh, very well, and it's become very much a religious thing, but it's, it's a, a blueprint for us. But it starts off with our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We're not going to get into everything, but I mean, it's important to keep our perspective right above everything else. Our life is to honor him. Our lives should exist, and they are here to be a glory to him, to be an honor to him, to be a blessing to him. We want him to be pleased in everything we do. That's the, the vision of our church. Now, the vision of our church, the scriptures, Acts 26, 16 through 19, we know those very well. And then the mission statement, how we are accomplishing that, we're going to what? Number one, we're going to honor God. Number two, we're going to grow in our faith, grow in Christ. Uh, number three, we're going to serve our generation by doing what? Reaching the lost, connecting the found. And then number four, we're going to finish well. That's what we're doing. But notice it all starts and revolves around honoring God. And this is such an important thing. We've talked about this so much over the last uh, uh, year, 14 months about relationship, about these things. And, and it's like, I can't get away from it. This is something we have to maintain the course of our life. It's not just start off in love with Jesus. It's finish in love with Jesus. It's keeping a strong desire and love for him and honor of him in everything you do. If that is your goal to honor him, it'll keep you out of a lot of things that you might otherwise fall into because you'll realize you'll begin to look at things from the standpoint of does this honor God or does this dishonor God? Does this, does this decision honor him or does it dishonor him? Does this bring glory to him or does this not bring glory to him? Is this something he would like or be pleased about or is this something he wouldn't, be, he wouldn't like or wouldn't be pleased about? Is this decision based upon his preference or based upon my own preference? You know what I'm talking about. And just living a life where honoring him is number one, there's such safety there. You know, my goal, one of our goals uh, amongst uh, many, but our primary goal as pastors is to encourage people and lead people in such a way you'll live your life with purpose. Because this life is short. We talk about it often. This life is short. And when this is done, we want to stand before the Lord without shame and without regret. This is so important. Just honoring him, keeping this first and foremost in our life is so important. And so Jesus said, in this man of pray, he said, our father, and of course, it's good to know that he's not just God, he is our father. He's both. He is, he is awesome, the creator of everything, but he's also dad. He's also a compassionate one who loves us and is looking to be a blessing in our life. Amen. And so our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, says your kingdom come, your will be done. We then started talking about the fact that it's, um, uh, people want to jump down to verse 11, but before Jesus got there, he said, listen, your priority in life, not necessarily every time you pray, but your priority in life should be to honor him, but then to seek the will of God. For the will of God for this earth, for our generation, for the time that we're here, the time that the Lord has called us to, but then also uh, his will for your life personally. And I'll just ask you, is this something you even think about as far as what's God's will for your life? What is God's plan for your life? What is it that he has for you to do? What is it that he desires of you? We know he desires a relationship, but then beyond that, what is it that he's wanting from you? Uh, there's been so many times in, in our life, our own personal lives, where uh, opportunities would come, opportunities would arise and would look great, and, and most people would, would, would have taken those things. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that because, uh, you know, look at us. I'm just saying that because we had people that would tell us, if that was offered to me, I would do that. If, if somebody gave me that opportunity, I would take it. What's wrong with you? And um, uh, getting out of high school, I had opportunities to do various things, but I had it was on my heart. I knew I was supposed to stay home, uh, to stay here. And at the time, I, I wanted to go out and take advantage of some of those opportunities. But the Lord very clearly put placed upon my heart, need to stay home, stay close. And so that's what I did. And so why? What is it? That's a submission to the will of God. This is a part of our lifestyle. 
So this is a part of our lifestyle. If you, sometimes when people wonder why things don't go the way they should or they encounter so many issues. Yes, we have an enemy out there. Sometimes the devil does things. The devil's a jerk. He hates you. He's wanting to destroy each and every last one of us. So we do have an adversary. We have to be smart about those things. But oftentimes people find themselves in difficult situations is because the situation they're in is not the situation God called them to be in. Meaning what I mean by that, what I mean is that what the circumstances of their life are outside of God's very best. I mean, you know, there is a, a, an ultimate and a perfect will of God for every single person. There is a perfect will of God for you, for your life. There is a perfect will of God for every individual. Now, I know that may seem lofty. It may seem like it's uh, too hard to, to, to do, to, to accomplish. How many believe Jesus walked out the perfect will of God? Let me see a raise hand. Who believe Jesus walked? Most, that's almost all of us. It, those who weren't sure, right? Jesus did walk out the perfect plan of God for his life. I mean, he, was, he, is, he is the son of God. He's, he is part of the Godhead, but he laid down his, his position as the son of God. He laid that down. He became a, a man just like you. And I think about what Jesus had to do. He laid aside every part of his divine nature and became just like you and I. The only thing he didn't have in his life was a sin nature because his father wasn't what didn't come from the seed of man it wasn't a natural heavenly or, or earthly father his father was the holy spirit and caused life to come into him so he didn't have a, a sin nature in him but he faced everything else in life just like you and i do every choice he made he had to make it he had to, he had to make a decision to either do it what seemed right looked right felt right or what god wanted him to do how I many of that doesn't always line up Maybe that's news to some of you. Well, if God loves me so much, he wouldn't ask me to do something that doesn't sound good. You don't know him real well, right? Because there are more things at, at stake in this life than our comfort. You know, you think about it, uh, we forget sometimes that this life, yes, this life is short, but this life isn't all there is. And this life is a, it is, it's a specific period of time in our existence. Now, this is something that, that God himself, uh, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit have been aware of for, from the beginning of time. But for you and I, this is the beginning of what we're, aware, of what we're seeing right now. And many times people think this is everything. This is, this is just a fraction of it. And so the people live, have, who's ever heard the term live your best life? This person is living, some, some of you are like, y'all are too, too, uh, too holy this morning. I've never heard that, brother. Oh, yeah, I'm living my best life. I, what is it? I'm taking, I'm taking every moment. I'm enjoying every single moment. Why? It's this idea that every moment I'm going to make sure it's the very best, the most enjoyable. I mean, no, that's very much a Western mentality. It really is a Western mentality. I mean, uh, uh, we, we are so pampered. And thank God, I mean, I'm not complaining. I mean, thank God I was born here and not in Papua New Guinea where, you know, where they don't have air conditioners, when it literally does feel like the inside of a dog's mouth. We can come inside, right? Um, it's so hot there, but we have so many privileges and so many nice things, and it's wonderful. But seeking pleasure shouldn't be the aim of our life. Seeking enjoyment shouldn't be the focus of our life. See seeking the easiest route shouldn't be the purpose of our life. Our purpose should be is to accomplish the assignment that we have. The reality is we're in a battle between light and dark. And for you and I, the only time we're going to be on the front lines is during this life. The next life, we're going to rule and reign with him. But sin will be dealt with. The devil will be dealt with. None of these things will be an issue any longer. And yes, it's going to be living our best life, right? I will tell you this. What you do in this life determines the life you're leaving then. People, I don't believe that's true. We're all just going to be floating around and and clouds and playing harps and eating Krispy Kreme. No, it's not all going. It's not going to be that way. There's going to be jobs. There's going to be things to do. There's going to be assignments. And your faithfulness now determines your responsibilities then. So be faithful. But so it should be our, our heart's desire and our aim in life to fulfill the will of God and not just fulfill the will of the flesh. And when I say flesh, what do I mean? Everybody, everybody hold up your hands. Look at your arms. That's what I'm talking about, right? How many you know that your body likes to do things or not do things that oftentimes you know it should or should not do? Right. I remember years ago, you know, I started running. As, as, as Brittany, she must be serving today, started doing a lot of running. And, and Brittany Jett, was, she was a 
high school runner. She ran in college for Georgia Southern, correct? She had a scholarship at Georgia Southern. And uh, you, you know, you all, y'all, if you've been around any length of time, you know Brittany. And, and so I started running and she was so excited that, you know, Pastor Greg's going to run. And because and, uh, she still is an active runner. She said, oh, I just love to run. And eventually you'll get to where you just love to run. She lied. She lied to me. Now, now there's something wrong in Brittany's mind somewhere. Maybe, Joby's agreeing, so it's okay to admit, right? I mean, it's some sort of a mental disorder, I think. It's, it's runnus messed upness or something. I, I'm trying to come up with a scientific sounding name, but it's something wrong with you when you love to run. And, and she said, if you do it, just push through. You'll eventually love it. I, I, I ran for years. Never loved it. Never, never enjoyed it one single bit. And if I asked my body, do you want to do it? I never got to the place where I wanted to run. The only time I wanted to run is when something was chasing me or I thought it was chasing me, right? Or maybe run to Krispy Kreme. Oh, I'll run then, you know? The hot light's on. I suddenly I have energy to run at that moment when the hot light's on. But anyway, uh, if, we, if we just simply live our life based upon how it feels or what it looks like, we're going to fall short. We're going to fall short of honoring God. We're going to fall short of our potential in life. You know, when, when um, uh, uh, Jim Hockaday was here last year, on the, on the time when before, before he came, we ran a clip of his, and he was talking about when we get to, into heaven, we'll look back and see, we'll see the devil for who he really was. We'll see the enemy for who he really was, Satan for who he really was, and we'll think, and we'll say to ourselves, that guy is the guy that gave us such a hard time? That clown is the guy who, who, who gave us such problems. That, that, that defeated, pathetic individual is the one that we cowered to and the one we let run our life. So he's the one that influences all of these things. He's the one that wants you to, sit, to do it your way and not God's way. Because that's his nature, that's who he is, and that's why he's in the state he's in. Because in him was, was he, he developed, God did not put it there, he developed this desire to do it his own way. I'm going to do it my way, not God's way. And I'm telling you, that is something we each have to fight. We have to fight that in our lives. We have to fight the desire to do whatever we want. That is not from God. It is from the enemy. And it's, why does the enemy come? Everybody know it? John 10, 10. Why does the enemy come? He comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Does the enemy come for any other reason than that? That's his, that's his aim in every area. It's to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He doesn't come. He doesn't, he doesn't speak up. He doesn't influence. He doesn't make suggestions to give you a better life. He doesn't tell you things like, it's okay to do it your way. Because that's where that, that's where that ultimately, where that thought process comes from. It comes from the very pit of hell. It comes from Satan himself. Sin was found in him. And it was this, I'm going to exalt myself above the throne of God right? I'm going to put myself above God. What is, I'm going to do what I want above what he wants. Anybody here, anybody here, 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 I'm, well, let's not just think about old dirty devil and old messed up devil, but see how this ends up translating in how we look at things. Well, that was him. Anytime we say, no, it's going to be my way and not his way. What are we doing? We're, we, that is the same influence in the same thought process that Lucifer got him in the position that he was in. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it my way. And he, the only time, the only suggestion of his, his way is only to produce stealing, killing, and destroying. It doesn't produce anything else. Never say, people say, well, I've been doing it my own way for a long time, and I kind of like the way it is. Anybody, anybody ever been there before? You've made your own decisions. You've just done it the way. Some of y'all are like, oh, never, brother. I've, I've never done such a thing. I, come on, let, let's be honest. You knew something you should do, but you just chose, I'm going to do it my way anyway. And you did it, and like nothing happened. <laughs> anybody ever been there before? Like, it was like, like it was, wasn't that bad. Y'all are so innocent this morning. It's like the greatest people on the planet. Oh, no, brother, I always do the will of the Lord. I'm just like Jesus. Nobody can say that but Jesus. He always does the will of the one who sent him, right? 
Now, he had opportunities to not do it, but he chose every time to do it, where we oftentimes didn't. There's been times in my life where I knew specifically what I needed to do, and I just didn't feel like doing it. And I had good reason to not do it. Yeah, I know you said such and such, God, but I got this. There's, I'm, you probably didn't think about it, but what about B, C, and D? Now, God, I know you know everything, but you forgot those. And forgot, forget about E, F, and G. Now, then we get to H. H is kind of crazy. Anybody ever rationalized with God before on something he's told you to do? And you start going through all the lists. Like, he doesn't know what you're thinking. Like, he doesn't know the, 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 the next. Who, who painted my parents in the room? You talk to your kids and you say, my kids never did this because they're perfect. But you, your kids probably, right? So... I want to get in trouble and then, you know, put a pillow over me in the night. But anyway, uh, uh, when you tell your kids to do something, and, and you know ahead of time what the, the reason to not do it's going to be. You already know what they're going to say. How do we know that? Because we used to do it ourselves. I need you to clean your room. Yeah, I will. But, Dad, I, I got this going on right now. Duh, Dad, duh. I can't do it right now. <laughs> we do this stuff with God all the time. And people think it be is silly, and they think it's insignificant. And just because we, I don't want to spend all this time on this, but just because you don't see the results of something immediately doesn't mean that the results aren't coming. Right? God is not unjust. He is not to be mocked. Whatever a man sows, good or bad, that they will also reap. A delay in reaping doesn't mean you're not, you're not going to reap. It's still, baby, it's still coming. And I'm not trying to threaten you. It's a law. It's just, it's the way it works. It's the way it works. And so Jesus was instructing them, listen, you want to honor God, but then your next heart needs to be, listen, my life is yours. What did Paul say? It is no longer I who lives, but it's Christ who lives in me. I know we have to move on, but, but this is so important. Like I said, so many people miss it right here. You can sit in services and hear good teaching, and you can spend time in your Bible and reading the Word of God, but if you don't actually submit to it, you will see limited results in your life. Anytime you choose something above Him, you're choosing stealing, killing, and destroying. Right? Right? See, we don't know. We, we don't know the beginning from the end. We don't know this, but the Lord knows the beginning from the end. And there are things in this life that simple obedience today will, will look five, ten years from now for you will look amazing. You, you'll be shocked. How is that even possible? Because of simple decisions to put his plan first, his will first, his priorities first, just a simple decision to do that in a lifestyle of doing, a lifestyle of submission. Set yourself up for months, years, decades down the road of such blessing in life and such, such peace. Sometimes our decisions, you know, when we do this, it, we, it, we actually go through difficulties. Rich will be here and he and, Daphne will, or he and Daphne will be here in August. Their decision to obey God. There's been a lot of difficulties that have followed that decision. A lot of, a lot of difficulties. We will eventually get through this topic, eventually. We will. But just thinking about Rich, you know, being in, in, in Spain, doing what they've done, they, they've had to make some sacrifices to do that. When Rich, when Rich graduated college, he went to a really small, very prestigious school in upstate New York. He had an offer for a job that would have had him a corner office in the Twin Towers. And yet the Lord put on his heart to go, told him to go to Ramah, to go to Bible school. He just spent a bunch of money and a bunch of time getting his education. He's got this great job waiting for him. And yet he just knew something's not right. Don't take that job. And in fact, the more he prayed about it, you need to go to Bible school, to go to Ramah and spend four years there hanging Christmas lights. He worked for the ministry. He was on their Christmas light team for multiple years. Now, thank God people hang Christmas lights. How many know that's a little different than a corner office in the Twin Towers. People, there's a, there's a lot more prestige attached to, the, to that, that, that job than the other one, right? Paycheck was really different. Well, he submitted, he went. How many know that there was, there, was, there was protection in multiple areas right there? 
It was a sacrifice at the moment. Of course, we knew a few years later what happened. The things fell down. He could have potentially have been in his office that day. We don't know. But what if he had disobeyed God there? Well, that's, that's an interesting thought. Yeah, Lord. What if he had disobeyed God then? People say, well, he, and, and yet still maintained his relationship with God, stayed in church, was a faithful member of the church he attended somewhere in New York City, found a good church in New York City, was faithful there. But he just didn't do that. He just took the job anyway. He just did it, you know, and, and he took the job. And, and then the tower said, we say, well, he still loves God, right? He still loves Jesus. He's still serving God. He would have been fine. It wouldn't have cost him his life. How can you, how can you confidently say that you would hear the instruction, don't go into work today, when you didn't heed the instruction, don't take the job in the first place? Right? That's what I'm talking about. Sometimes we go through things and we don't realize what's happening has got nothing to do with, it's, it's a lot of times got nothing to do with the devil other than he is a jerk. But we really gave opportunity to him by not being submitted to him. If Rich had not submitted and said, not my will, but Lord, I'll do what you want me to do, I'll go. And he did it with the right heart. Could have gone and not had the right heart. I mean, all these things are tied together, but he, he could have been mad about it, but he went, had the right heart. What if he had stayed and had a great heart towards God? Well, God would have protected him. I believe the mercy of God is, is pretty incredible. The mercy of God is, is quite incredible. But at the same time, we could not stand in eternity and point our finger at God. Well, why didn't you do this for him in this situation? We would, we would have been wrong to say, God, you didn't do something. He would have said, well, I told him what to do. I did, I did answer him. I did deliver him from the tower on that, was it a Tuesday morning? A Tuesday morning. I did deliver him from that tower, but I did it 10 years earlier when I told him, don't take that job. Go to Rama. Right? See, we think these, these things are small deals. We think these things are, are small little issues in our life. Sometimes we think it's our pastor trying to push us or, or God trying to be a meanie. Right? No, the devil is the pusher. He's the jerk. He's the thief, the killer, the destroyer. That's who he is. But Jesus himself, the son of God, told us, inspired by the Holy Spirit, I have come. My only reason that I have come is that you would what? Have life. Put the scripture up, John 10, 10. Because you need to see it. Don't just believe I said it. So I believe some of you might be dealing with things, decisions, things you know you need to do. And, it's, and I don't want to say simple because it may not be simple. It might have been simple 10 years ago. Maybe in a place now where it's not even simple any longer. Now it's not even a simple issue any longer because your life's wrapped up in it. And yet you, you've, you repent. You can repent and say, God, I'm sorry for that. But you know you've got to then make changes and do things. Turn the wheel. Get back on the road right? The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come, they may have life, and they might have it more abundantly. I'm telling you, whatever, the, whatever God says to you, <laughs> well, I've been asking him, and he's not talking. I got a hmm out of Laura. I've been asking him what I should do in this situation, but he's not talking. I've been praying, Lord, tell me what I need to do. Oh, Jesus. <gasps> what do I do? And he's not talking. I mean, I'm giving everything I got. He's not answering. Must be okay. One thing I've noticed this about the Lord, when he's already told you, he doesn't tend to repeat himself a whole lot. Because he knows, he expects you to, to hear what he said. Well, he never said anything to me. Well, he said a whole lot of stuff. He said a whole lot of stuff. And if you're, you don't need a special word. If you are requiring a special word, we already have his special word. You have a collection of his words to you. Yeah. And if you're looking for something else, you've got to be honest with yourself. Are you looking for a word or an out? 
Are you looking for a word or an excuse? Are you looking for an answer or a different opportunity? What is it you're really looking for? <laughs> isn't this fun this morning? But this is life, isn't it? This, our life is full of these decisions. Full of these decisions. I mean, the fact that you're here this morning is, is, is indication that you made a good decision today. Right? Now, I trust, I'm trusting everybody here this morning is here because you want to be. You're not on drugs. You weren't drugged in this morning. <laughs> so I said once, I, I, I did drugs as a kid. I was drugged to church every single week as a kid, you know. So hopefully you weren't drugged here, but, but sometimes parents, you got to do what you got to do. Well, I want my kids to decide for themselves. You, you, it's your job. To teach, train, model. <laughs> We're getting all into it, aren't we? Don't talk about kids, preacher. <laughs> no, but it's about decisions. It's about decisions. This, 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 the Lord's Prayer, we, what we call the Lord's Prayer, wasn't just some simple little thing you recite. You, can you see the priorities and the heart focus that's all throughout this? And these are deeper issues. These are important issues. If you'll just simply do what the Word of God, start there. Do walk in the light that you have. You're here this morning. I applaud you. You're here because I trust everybody here for the right reason, right? I trust that's the case. But you're, you're making a decision to put this first, then the springs first. You, know, the, you, you do know the springs aren't empty right now. You may know that the springs are open and the water's still 72 degrees. And the birds are still chirping out there, right? And there's otters and little fishes swimming around. It's quite beautiful. You know, it's quite beautiful right now. And you know, you could be there. Why are you painting such a great picture of the springs? Because, that, because they always paint that picture, picture. Option B always looks really good. Option B always looks really good. And, and to deny that it doesn't look good is stupid. Of course, it, I would rather be at the beach. Actually, we're not beach people at this point, not so much. I'd rather be in the mountains. I would rather be in the mountains. Ooh, hallelujah. In fact, I would, I would rather live in the mountains. Who would rather live in the mountains? Let's be honest. Don't lie before the Lord. <laughs> we get some beach. Who's our beach people? Y'all aren't right. All right. <laughs> Brother Hagen always used to say, you know, don't, don't, don't tell the Lord, Lord, I, you know, I'll never do this. Because whatever you say, you'll never do this. What he'll, he'll tell you to do. So I, I tried it. I, for years, I said, Lord, I would never go to Hawaii for you. You know, he didn't, he didn't send me to Hawaii. I guess he knew my heart. I tried my best. How many of you can't use reverse psychology on God? I tried it. God, I will never live in Bora Bora. I would never do that. I, I, I would rather be in the mountains. In fact, when, I, when we left Rama, I had an opportunity to take a, past, uh, a youth pastor job in Breckenridge, Colorado. Oh. I mean, when I say Breckenridge, Colorado, I can literally hear angels singing in my head. Oh. Right? I would have an epic pass. I would ski all the, all, the, all, the, all the resorts in that area. It would have been the greatest moment of my... And I'd have been in the ministry... In Breckenridge, Colorado, Ooh, just talking about it now, if I could go back in time. No, no, no. And, no. Uh, and I had an opportunity, and it was a great job. It was a great offer. And it was, in, it was that. yet, had that like, eh, eh, eh. you know what I'm talking about? It was, yeah, out here, but on the inside, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And on that side, I'm like, yeah. And, and the more I listened, and, I, and, I, and it was, and you're, you're, you're going back and forth, right? You had to make a choice. I said, you got to make a choice. <laughs> you've done this. Yeah, I know you've done it. Yeah. And God sees that. Yeah. He sees that. He's a rewarder of all of those things. So he's a rewarder of all of those things. Yeah. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. Right? To be tempted by the devil. Would God 
do such a thing? He did? Right? He sure enough did. It, Veronica says he still does. Yes, he, he, will, he, will, he will tell you to do stuff that the old dirty devil is waiting for you. Right? To try to get you to, to do what he wants. He's always waiting for you. The good news is we have a relationship with the master. And we know in him that there's nothing but life and life more abundantly. There's not an ounce, a drop of stealing, killing, and destroying attached to it. There's not a moment of, of, of pain, real pain, lasting pain. There's not a moment of eternal consequence. There's not a moment of something that's going to bring you, cause less than in your life as a result. Not a moment of it there. What if I had gone to Colorado? I'd have loved it for a moment. The worst thing that could have happened to me is I'd have gone there and I still loved it. That's the worst thing that could have happened. I'd gone there outside of the will of God and today in 2024, 24 years later, I'm still loving it. What does it mean? I'm loving life that is just not quite right. I'm not asking you to do what you love. I'm not saying don't do what you don't love. I'm just saying what is God saying to you, right? What has the Lord told you to do? What is he instructing you to do? What has the word told you to do? God pays. The Lord pays. Don't mock God whatever you sow Brother, you're going to reap. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever he asks you to do, you obey that. Yeah. I'm telling you what, there are so many good things ahead for the obedient. There are people that you would never, you don't, you have no idea the sacrifices they've made and just the steady decision to obey God in the little decisions and in the big decisions. I'm not going to date this one. I'm not going to date that one. I'm not going to take this job. I'm not going to take that one. I'm not, I'm not going to do this with my kids. I'm going to do that with my kids. I mean, simple little things. And they just had a heart of, not my will, your will be done. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Yes, on the earth, but in my life. I had no intention. This was going to be a review this morning. But, but th 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 this is where success is all, this is where it is. This is where, this is where it lives. This is it. Why didn't Jesus talk about, we're, we were going to get into ver verse 11, give us this day our daily bread, the prayer of faith, the prayer of petition. We'll get to it. Why didn't Jesus get there? Why didn't he do that first? Because we already have scripture and verse on that, don't we? What is it? Anybody know Matthew six thirty three? Seek ye what? Second, seek ye third, kind of first, in the general vicinity of first. No, seek ye what? First, the kingdom of Earl. <laughs> Earl likes the sound of that. Earl was like, oh, okay, I like that. Right. Give me five, the kingdom of Earl. He said, I can't give you five. He just rebukes me, y'all. Oh, my goodness. So, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> But how many times do we do? It's the kingdom of, insert your name. Kingdom of, insert your family name. Kingdom name of the pastime you really enjoy. Kingdom name of the place you think is the greatest place that you just got to go. Can I tell you, heaven's beaches look way better than they do here. I can't wait to get to heaven. I don't know how this is going to work, y'all. I love to ski. I don't know how this is going to work. When you remove the threat of bodily injury... Which is part of what makes skiing so much fun. It's a little dangerous. You know, don't hit the tree. Don't do something. Go, ah, kind of crazy. When you remove, you can't, if we have glorified bodies and we can't break anything, it's skiing going to be fun. But I'm, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> the mountains there are way cooler than the mountains here. I'm going to ski Mount Everest there. <laughs> right? See, so what kingdom is it that you're serving? A lot of times, can we be honest with us? Most of these things are the kingdom of just laziness. 
Just kingdom of just, I'd rather watch the TV. The kingdom of I'd rather spend my, instead of tithing, spend that 10% on a new pair of shoes that after I wore them out and get them dirty, I'm not going to like them anymore. Right? Well, praise God. Like I said, I had no intention of this this morning, but... You know, you never know who you have in service with you. Any given week, you never know. But I do know this, human nature is the same. <laughs> and uh, we're all in positions of needing to, to live submitted lives. We're all in a position of needing to live submitted lives. Y'all can stand. This will be one of our struggles, one of our fights the remainder of our days. It's interesting. We're going to be dismissed here in just a minute. It's interesting. You ever think this is just set aside? This is just Greg Anderson thinking for a moment. This decision to do the will of God, this, this battle that we're in, this constant pressure to not live a life honoring Him that honors ourselves. You know, when anything you choose above Him, that's what you're honoring, right? But a life that's not submitted, like that, that choice, the constant choice, the constant choice, the constant choice. And this goes in every area, who, who to share your testimony with, you know, what you do with your money, your time, your influence, all of those things. Your tension, all of that stuff. You know, I said before that this life is the only time we're going to have, we have, that we're going to face this. And be at this point of, of tension, you could say. Where you've got an adversary that is... He, he's warring against us. And this is the only time we're going to have on the front lines. But you know, this, this lesson, this, this, this uh, decision of obedience, this lifestyle of, of consecration to God and the plan of God, you realize that this doesn't end when this life is over. God didn't put that desire in Lucifer or even the thought to do it his own way because he apparently had some amount of free will he found it on his own you ever think about that he found it on his own just when I get to heaven it'll be so easy we'll still have to watch ourselves I believe this now this is my personal opinion we'll still have to watch ourselves We'll still have to continually adjust and, and, and take stock in, our, in, our, in what, what he's asked us to do. There will be people in this room that will be rulers over many cities. There will be people in this room that will rule over one, some will rule over ten. There will be people doing this job, that job. I mean, there, there will be different things that are going on. We have Bible for that. People have different responsibilities. And a person could say, you know what, I think I'm going to call this the kingdom of Earl. I think I'm going to call it the kingdom of Earl. He, he, that, that, that temptation will always be there. But I'm, I don't say the temptation may not be there, but the ability to do that will always be there. Now, I believe we'll have seen the other side. We'll know what that looks like, right? You'd be a fool to, to go there. But this is, this is developing something that in us and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us in this, something that we're going to use for the ages to come. A submitted heart, a consecrated heart, right? We're going to use that in the countless ages that are ahead of us. Get it now. Get it now. There's some I believe that God has just been, he's been wanting to do certain things in your life. And he's just looking for you to say, all right, I'm going to stop doing it my way I'm just going to, I'm just going to submit. You know, this has got, and really this has got nothing to do with a need in your life. Like I need, I need a better life. Your life may be great, but if it's outside of the will of God, it ain't. <laughs> right? It may look great, but if it's outside of the will of God, it isn't. Or, it's, or it is by man's standards. It's a pretty lowly. We've got the ability to live by His standards, to live a life that's well-pleasing to Him. 
We have the opportunity to do that in our lives. Praise God. We can all do this. I'm not there. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. He's not, he's not looking for perfection. He's looking for somebody who is willing to, to, to run that road, to be led by the Spirit, to be led by His Word. He's looking for those who say, you know what? I'm going to do this, and by your grace, I will fulfill it. By your grace, I will finish this. By your grace, I won't miss it again. By your grace, I'll make the right decisions. By your, I'll do those things. Anybody in, there, in here, that's your heart this morning? That's your heart this morning? That God knows your heart. He knows your heart. Let, let's just pray together. You can, you can pray with me and believe God for yourself. Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, your compassion. Father, thank you for Jesus, all that you've done for us. Lord, we're grateful that you are mindful of us and that you do have a plan for each of us. We're grateful that you have a, a, a role for each of us. You thought so much of us that you have things laid out from the beginning and before, before time even began, things set out just for us. As individuals, as a, as a body, as a people, you have things set out just for us. That's an awesome thing, Lord, and we're, we're grateful. We're, we're in awe of that. We're in awe that you would think so much of us. And Lord, I know I've, 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 this is true of me, and I'm sure this is true of, of many. Lord, I've not always done it the way that I should. I've not always done it the way that was necessary. I've not always listened and obeyed. I've not always been quick to listen and obey. And Father, in those areas, Lord, I, I, I it, it, well, the things I've already talked to you about, those are done. You're not even thinking about those. You don't even remember them. But Lord, in our lives, there's areas that we're currently not walking in obedience, not walking in submission, not, not walking a life of your will be done, your kingdom come on earth in my life as it is in heaven. Where that's not been our focus, not been our intention, Lord, where that's not been the case. Lord, forgive us for that. Forgive me for that. Forgive us for those areas. And Lord, we make the determination to not repeat them, to make those changes, to make those adjustments. And that's where we put a demand and we ask and put a request on your grace, your, 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 your help, supernatural help that you provide. Lord, help us to see clearly the things that we have ignored for so long that, that we're so clear at one point, now we're not even sure. Lord, help us to see those things again, but also the path to take, the routes to take, the steps to take of getting things back in order, back in line. Father, help us to walk those things out. Father, I ask for grace for every single person in this room, an anointing on their life, a grace on their life to walk these things out in the name of Jesus. Father, we know the things that you have for us are wonderful things. They're amazing things, priceless things. You have for each and every last person in this room. In fact, every person on the planet, you have a plan. Lord, help us be people that will show you and live a life that's a reflection of what it looks like to be in partnership, in obedience with you. Father, we thank you for your help. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, Father. We're not sad about it, Lord. We're glad about it because we know united with you is a wonderful place to be. Hallelujah. In step with you is a wonderful place to be. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done and thank you for what you surely will do in our life. We thank you for it. In the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. Everybody said amen, amen, amen. Praise God. God is good. I tell you, the love of God is, is so amazing. His compassion toward us is so, so cool. You know, like I said, I wasn't intending to do this this morning, but, but if, we, if we feel like we need to go this way, that this is God. He loves us. If there's one in the room that needs to make an adjustment, man, he cares enough to let's, let's wait for the one. He's waited for me so many times. I'm so grateful for that. Praise God. He's faithful and just in all of his ways, slow to anger, quick to forgive, always ready to receive, always ready to come alongside and run with us. Praise God. What a blessing. What a good God we serve. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Glory, glory, glory be to God. Well, we're going to dismiss here in just a second. Before we do, if you're here this morning, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life.